Knowledge is power. Without information, we are powerless. For millions of South Africans, the main source of news and information is the SABC. But recently, our public broadcaster banned images of protest from our screens, and our free expression on the internet may also be under threat from a proposed new law. Is it in our interests for the powers that be to help shape our thoughts, or is the government trying to control our minds? So with me to discuss this are Alvin Pumuzo Rabea, Secretary of Police. Sipor Siba, Chief Operations Officer at the Film and Publications Board. Ruben Motlaloja, Head of ICASA. Karima Brown, Group Executive, Independent Media. Francis Antoni of the Helen Suzman Foundation. Koketo Mwedi, Executive Director of Amanda.mobi. And Mika Reddy of the Right to Know campaign. And the people's poet, Mzwake Mbuli, is also in the house. And in the audience, we have journalists, we have activists and communities. Welcome to you all. You at home can also have your say on Facebook and Twitter. But before we begin our discussion, take a look at this. The Roads Must Fall campaign. TV pictures seen by students across South Africa. Protests sprang up on other campuses. A movement was born and university fee increases were stopped. Um, fire behind me. I don't know if you Schools can being burnt in Vuwani, also seen on our screens. But for the public broadcaster, this was the last straw. The SABC decided it would not cover any further violent destruction of property, citing public interest. Shlaudi Motswaneng, who was the COO at the time, said showing violence on TV would encourage more violence. It's about crime. You are also influencing the young ones to, 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 to commit crime because they will believe that for me to be a sin, I should commit crime. But not all protesters accept that their protests are encouraging crime. Alfred Monapula lives in Madi Tlokwa, a small mining community in the northwest province. His house has been damaged by daily blasting from the neighboring crow mine. The community's complaints had been ignored by the mine and their local councillor. When they chose a new candidate to represent them in local government elections, they were overruled by their party's provincial structures. This community, like many others across the country, decided the only way to make their voices heard now would be to protest. Alex Salang, a young community activist, was part of the protest. So there was this resolution, OK, we are going to show the ANC, we are going to demonstrate, to tell them that the person who happens to be their choice is not our choice. Alex saw an opportunity to have their story heard on a national platform. So I called this person that I know, and then he promised that he, he, he will send TV people to come and capture what is happening. Unfortunately, that has not happened. This is the protest captured on a cell phone. Images that South Africans have never seen on the public broadcaster. With TV cameras nowhere to be seen, Police moved in. Mm. Alfred and Alex think that people whose political views differ from those of the ruling party are being silenced. There was a massive backlash against the public broadcaster's decision to pick and choose visuals that suited its narrative. The implications of um, selective news being publicized, not getting information as it is, is actually 
the public not having to have an informed decisions, uh, an informed decision mainly to vote because they don't know what's currently happening in their country. It could be very dangerous. The SABC's decision to exclude protests like the one in Mariklokwa was challenged by ICASA. The SABC lost. Shlaudi Mutswaneng has been in and out of court fighting for his job. It's not just TV broadcasts that spread information. Today, social media is a large part of our daily lives. Facebook and Twitter have become tools to mobilize civil activism. But in South Africa, our internet activity could soon be restricted. Government says proposed amendments to the Film and Publication Act are designed to protect us from offensive online content like hate speech and child pornography. Is there a danger that government will soon control the airwaves and the net? And could this power be abused? Alex is on a police list for being an instigator of the Madi Tlokwa protest. I'm not the one who organized this, but people organize themselves. But at the end of the day, there will be someone who will speak on behalf of these people. Then that happens to be me. Now the police are after me. So even though we have a legal right to protest, the state is watching those of us who do, either directly or through informers who are our peers. Peer-to-peer -peer surveillance is happening in a context in which um, Ria Piecha, a couple of years ago, asked for an additional 3.3 billion for public order policing, in which the bulk of it was going to be used for informants to try and kill protests before protest starts. Ruben, you head the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, ICASA, and you ruled that Saudi's ban on the broadcasting of protests was, in fact, not in the public interest. Why? The decision by the SABC was unlawful, was not in line with the prescripts of the Constitution, because the Constitution enjoins <coughs> um, uh, the, the, the institutions that support democracy to ensure that there's free flow of information and the people can impart and receive information without, oh, right. without any restrictions. What about the perception that ICASA is toothless, that you only react when there's a scandal like the firing of journalists and uh, the perception that when a guy has the president's ear, you don't act? We don't pick and choose. On a daily basis, we, we do um, a monitor uh, the broadcasting sector and all other licenses that, that are under our, our scope. And, and that will tell you whether the SABC it complies with uh, its uh, licensing conditions. All right. And Francis, why did you guys take Laudi to the High Court over his decision to ban the broadcasting of protests? We not only took him to the High Court, we also took the minister and the entire board. Sure. Why? Uh, for the reasons which Ruben has, uh, has suggested. We have a constitution. We have a Bill of Rights. There's a Broadcasting Act and there are also internal policies. For a long time, we've been watching this and monitoring it. Uh, we took a decision that this is unlawful. It violates the Broadcasting Act. It violates the Bill of Rights. And it, this, and it also violates the Constitution. But, but why have you not taken uh, corporate media to court for, for their bias? This is not a matter of bias here. Uh, the public broadcaster has a specific mandate. It is our broadcaster. It's not the state's broadcaster, it's not uh, the shareholder's broadcaster, and it's a public interest matter here. And that's why we can take the SABC. I want to come to Mzwake Mbuli here, but before we do, I'd like us to watch a song that he did. The SABC has delivered the good news. We applaud the monumental decision. 90% of South African content, 90% of better life, 90% of poverty alleviation, 90, 90. Thank you so much for making the time to be here. So, why did you 
feel the need to literally sing Saudi's praises, especially when, when so many people were criticizing him? Yeah, there's a history behind this. Uh, under apartheid, I was banned by the SBC for 13 years. And then come 1990, 1994, we thought when Madiba was inaugurated, our music was going to be played, regardless of the fact that most of the, the archival material was crashed or damaged. So we were told the doors of us and Kasha shall be open. We were all looking forward to, to a freedom. And uh, it was business as usual from, from May 10, Madiba's inauguration, that too much foreign music, American, European music, dominated the airways. We were there in our country. We fought for the liberation of this country, but we were sidelined. So with respect to the history, don't you feel to some extent that singing the praises of someone who has been accused of censoring the media is in fact supporting the very same system it was in different that. hands? It was before that. You know, talking about SBC, uh, the, the lyrics mentioned Saudi, but our struggle started 1994, 95. There was no Saudi there. The so I'm saying, yes, I'm saying you are saying Saudi. It was long before the birth of Ikasa. Later, when we complained, mm. they told us about uh, the fact that we are barking at the wrong tree. To, to talk to Ikasa, there was no Ikasa. Ikasa, since 1994, or since its inception, right. has, never, has never defended the musicians. Right. I'm talking about musicians, that is why I'm here. Okay. I'm not talking on behalf of organizations. Okay. 100%. Koke, okay, so then, uh, I mean, we need a man like Claudi at the SABC to, who's willing to, to shake things up, and, and a man who's brave enough to, to give more airtime to local content and maybe even to rethink the editorial policies of the SABC. Saudi reckons he's got the formula. What's the problem? I think the difficulty here is that two separate issues are being conflated, right? The issue of censorship and the issue of 90% music. To say that you are anti-censorship is not to say that you do not want local music, but also to recognize that due process wasn't followed to ensure that the 90% happens is not to say that it's not important. So I think this idea that it's either or is actually quite <laughs> false. Sure. And just on the topic of censorship in particular, what I want us to remember is that the majority of black households in this country are dependent on the SABC <coughs> as their sole source of news. Sure. So in this conflation of issues, we should also just recognize that when we say that to be against censorship is to disregard the 90%, the position we are putting these households I, Is there a disconnection here, Karima? Uh, because could it maybe be argued that Saudi's editorial policy, like his policy on local content, is driven by patriotism, nation building? No, it's driven by patronage. And I think that's the important issue. We need to be accurate about the demand for local music. I support Mzwaki Mbuli's position, but let it be stated for the record that several organizations have since 2012 actually marched onto the SABC, onto Cloudy, demanding an increase in local content. In fact, at the time, he told them that he is not interested. When we protested recently at the SABC, when those eight journalists were fired, we reminded Cloudy that the demand for local content was in fact the demand of the very same organizations that are fighting the attempts by Cloudy to censor views that are not consistent with his own personal, vested political, and let me say, financial interests. The second point I want to make, and this is particularly to the musicians, can you imagine you come from the very communities that are denied the full picture of what is happening in South Africa? but you are given the right to play your music. Is there not an inconsistency? Should you not as musicians say that yes, we have now got local content, but our communities where we come from deserve the same right to have the full picture of their lives and their lived experiences of this country shown on the public broadcaster 
that in many instances is in fact the only source of information for those same communities. All right. So that is the challenge for those musicians, okay. actually. I want to bring Dudu Zhang into the conversation here. I don't think that the issues are, are separate issues. I think that all these issues are inextricably linked because you can't say that the music and the arts and culture sector has its own battles to fight that are separate from other broader media issues because it's, it's one entire industry. Yes, we have different mandates, but ultimately we are in the same society we come from the same communities. We are trying to create an atmosphere where everyone can partake, where everyone can deliver whatever they want to deliver, be it music, be it news content, in, 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 a, in, a, in a way where there's free flow of that information. And not just from the top down, not just from creators of media, journalists and musicians pouring information out, but ultimately also from the ground up, where communities and citizens are able to say, well, this is what's happening, this is our lived experience, and here we go. So that's, that's where we're at. Thank you very much. Um, Amika. I, I, I mean, it's clear that this 90% thing is being used by Claudia as a red herring yes. to divert attention from censorship, you know, in a desperate attempt to rake together support as his legitimacy crumbles. His legitimacy is in crisis and he throws out the slogan 90%. So it's, a, it's just a last ditch attempt to rustle up support in the face of an unprecedented crisis at the SABC. And frankly, I mean, if you call yourself uh, the people's poet, you shouldn't be shilling for a man yes. who wants to censor the people's struggle. But, but, but it's, almost, it's almost, it's, it's almost as if there's a general, it's almost, excuse me. It's I never said, even in struggling a, artists. we used to say, yes. you can't have a normal sport in an abnormal society. Sure. So I, if I may speak just my interject language. there, Karima, what are your thoughts on this? The demand of the artist about local content isn't just about music. It is in fact about our lived experiences. It's about our health situation. It's about our education situation. It is about our economic situation. It's about our joblessness. It is about what our government is doing for us and what they're not doing for us. So the demand for local content is a real demand. All right. And cloudy, cloudy. Cloudy is the one that is deciding what local content is okay. And that, I, that is why I'm saying it is not a move to encourage local content. It is a move to buy credibility through patronage. All right. Thank you. It must be said that Claudi Motsuening was invited to the big debate and uh, he's not here. But after the break, some political comedy about sunshine journalism. Don't go away. Hello, hello everybody, people, important people. Nabanye. Um, it's been a heated debate, it's been a heated debate, but uh, I must say the, the SABC is important. It's a very important entity, especially for me who grew up as Lali and in the rural areas, was my access to the world. That's how I became an entertainer, by seeing other entertainers. And I was like, I wanna do that, I wanna do that. But we can't ignore what's happening now, right? Right now it's, uh, yay! Strange times. I mean, there's Mr. Cloudy, and if eyes are the windows to the soul, those eyes are red. They are so red, he looks drunk on power. <laughs> but not just drunk on power, he looks like he's suffering from a permanent babalas from power. Red all the time. <laughs> just all the time. And the thing is, people have been complaining. He's been uh, in the spotlight for the wrong reasons, you know, the wrong reasons. Um, but he doesn't understand why. He's like, guys, there's no problem here. What's happening? Hmm? And some people think, guys, but um, the SABC needs 64 million in the bank to survive every month, and you have about half in the bank. Is this because of matric? Shall I, matric boy? <laughs> is this the problem here? SABC's non-executive director, he's, he's like, what's the panic? He's like, what's the panic, guys? When S there's no crisis. There's no crisis because when ESCOM is in crisis, they have load shedding. SABC is still on. I mean, what are you guys complaining about? <laughs> there's no crisis here. And uh, the journalists all protested. They, did, they silently protested by going to work in black. They were all black, which was really awkward for the pro-cloudy guys who wore black and jay buona, they didn't know about the protest. <laughs> they were just then black, 
or his awkward favorite one. But it's important, and the censorship is happening, and censorship is not a good thing. In history, every time there's been censorship, worse things happen afterwards, right? And I think on the SABC, there are better things to censor, like generations. We should maybe just stop that. We should stop. <laughs> My name is Luis Matinga. Thank you so much for your time. Welcome back to the big debate on freedom of expression, press freedom, and the troubled goings on at our public broadcaster. That was Loiso Madinga. Now, I want to talk about how we figure out what is actually in the public interest when it comes to news coverage. So let's speak to Alex Salang from Maritokwa, who we saw in our film. Alex had tried to get the SABC to cover a protest in his community. Alex. Remind us why you were protesting and burning tires. The ANC gave us the person we did not want. Now the people gather themselves and decide to protest. And then I actually contact uh, the guy from the SABC, asking him to come and broadcast the protest. Unfortunately, he just promised that the, the TV guys will come, and on that day, they never did. The only people who came, it was the radio guys. Okay. So our protests uh, were, were never captured. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I think we, we, are, we are being denied a freedom, as the constituent stipulates that everyone has the right to information. Now, things are happening where we, we stay, and then uh, there is no information that goes to the community or to the parliament. Then we, I feel it is, it is an injustice for us for things that are happening are not captured by the SAPC. So tell me about some of those things that are not happening. Remind me about what's happening with the houses. The houses are full of crests and then we believe that is a result of the mining activities. There will be no respondent on, on, on how to fix those things in our houses. That's when people decide to go, to go on roads and protest. All right, yes. thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so, Alvin Pumu, is it true that Broadcasting violence promotes or provokes more violence. Isn't this just a, a, a smoke screen to criminalize activists? Alex and his community had very good reason to protest. They had to burn tires to be seen. I haven't seen a research like um, uh, that. Maybe somebody needs to do a proper research and we say, We have that research. Does it? Oh, okay. Maybe the, you have the research, Sipo. Maybe have, he will have be the, the one who is uh, in a better position to so, actually so respond. So does showing protests on television make people want to protest more? Not particularly in relation to, and I don't want to just um, restrict this just to broadcasting in, in so far as sure. the internal decision by the SABC, because that, that was not the basis for our research. Yeah. There's a study that was uh, conducted by us in partnership with uh, UNISA, uh, where we looked at the impact uh, of violence, media violence, uh, on children. And um, in fact, uh, the, the, the findings um, are to the effect that indeed there is a direct correlation. Children tend to mold their behavior um, around the type of things that they get exposed to. The minute you talk about censorship, every, now there's this tendency to think that uh, when you talk of censorship, it, it means it is illegal and you're going back to the past. The conversation that we should be having as, 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 as a country is to say, um, Let's talk about the appropriateness of the content that gets to be dished out. In fact, the studies have shown that uh, television is the biggest uh, medium through which yeah. um, the public access information. Do you think that Cloudy then has a point? Uh, I will not be able to, to say yes or no because I'm not privy to the, that internal uh, policy. I haven't read it. All but right. insofar as what public interest is in relation to the type of content that's right. out there, we have those studies. Let's expand on that a little bit. Karima, what is actually in the public interest for a public broadcaster, but for the media in general? I think the first thing to actually say about censorship is that it is irrational and that it's arbitrary. The SABC has a set of rules that guides editorial policy. 
And that is what is at the center of this discussion. And that is what we need to return to. One of the best known television broadcasters, SABC broadcasters, um, wrote a seminal piece for independent media detailing how his interviews that had nothing to do with violent images, his interviews with the president had been interfered with, had been censored on the instruction of people from the presidency who relayed that information to those in control at the SABC. I'm going to come to you, Mika, in just a second. Uh, uh, Joe? Yes. There's something very telling in what uh, Sipo said earlier when he said the research they've looked at showed that the impact of violence on children. Now, unconsciously, he's telling us a very big story that in fact we need a boss to tell us what we children should not see. Yes. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, per, perhaps unconsciously you are telling us that what we are talking about here is what should adults be allowed to see yes. and who decides that. Yes. It can be one person sitting yes. No, uh, but you see, you see, I think the one thing which, is, which I find to be unfair is the fact that we're sitting here bashing one individual. But what I'm saying too is that, and I'm talking about the Film and Publication Board, I'm saying that we have processes, scientific processes. We go to the public, we go to you guys and say, uh, how should we restrict information? Mika. We're talking about violence at protests and the censorship of protests. And protests, as we have seen, are inherently issues of public interest. It's about the public taking to the streets to voice their grievances. And Claudia is trying to censor that in the name of a certain faction of the ruling elite. Now, I also want to talk about surveillance. The flip side of a free flow of information is that the government should not be collecting information about us to prevent us from protesting. Let's talk to some more activists. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. What is your name? Meshek Mangula from Egurulene Environmental Organization. As communities, we are not given any platform mm -hmm. to be able to engage with business, government and so on. We are left alone. Mm -hmm. And with that anger bottled up, we end up going to the street. As for me, I've been uh, many a times collected by police and they take around with me uh, without any reason. Five o'clock in the morning, they'll come and say, Are you Meshek Mangula? Do you understand what is uh, economic growth? I said, very well, I understand. But I should be part and parcel of decision making. So the police ask you about economic growth. Exactly. <laughs> and say, why are you always in the street making noise and all the stuff? I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. The growth that you're coming, the economy that you're talking about, it, it doesn't really assist me. It's for business and a few uh, people up there who are enriching themselves. The community, they don't benefit anything. Yes, we know what do they benefit. They benefit pollution, uh, dirty water and everything. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So before I come to you, I'll come to you, Ruben, in just a second. Pomo, are you spying on Meshach? I, I think there, there, there are processes that uh, he needs to follow. If, um, I mean, I come from the Civilian Secretariat for Police. We do oversight of um, the police service. If um, the police are not doing uh, proper work and you've got a complaint against the police, you can actually uh, report to us for us to follow up on that um, uh, matter. I know of several politicians, when I meet with them in my course of my work, they insist that I hand my phone in to the security. They hand their phones in. And I'm saying, why do you want to hand your phones in? I need my phone to record. And they will say to me, we are being listened to. These are cabinet ministers. So I just wanted to know, as a civilian secretariat, how many complaints have you had? And are you investigating them? And what are you finding? I indicated that it's, um, uh, we do oversight over the police, not over the um, uh, state security. There is a, a body that actually looks right. into so that. So you're not I in a cannot position talk to answer that question. about those That's perfectly um, issues. Fine. The point here is that we have seen the increased securitization of our state. Yeah. People are being listened to. There's very little recourse for ordinary citizens. Yeah. And then there are huge problems with the law. RICA, for instance, has massive loopholes in it that allow the spooks, that allow the spies 
uh, to abuse their power. Our phone numbers are linked because of Rika to our ID numbers mm. and addresses. Address, yeah. How are they storing that data? It stands to reason they have more than our mm. phone numbers. Absolutely. How are they storing it? Where are they storing it? Where are they getting from? Yes. We need to know. How do they get the information? And that is the big question. When we come back, we ask, how free is the internet? And is it about to be closed down in South Africa? This is the big debate. Welcome back to the big debate on freedom of expression and censorship. I'm Masachaba Nlovu. The internet has become central to our lives. Many of us post on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, WeChat, or in our own personal blogs and other sites. So without this, campaigns like Fees Must Fall would have never got off the ground. But the government wants to check what we plan to post before we post it. Sipo. How feasible is this, first of all? Okay, so basically I must say that that is the perception um, and, and the misconception that right to know has been spreading across the country, say that as government, <laughs> this is what we want to do, we want to pre-check before you can upload it and before you can pause, which is not correct. The Films and Publications Amendment Bill and the online policy is to create a framework to ensure that um, users exercise caution and responsibility in using these mediums and social networks and, 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 and uh, um, new media. Um, because the specific uh, provision that deals with um, <coughs> content that is prohibited, we say you cannot um, use a social network to, to distribute revenge porn. You cannot use uh, social networks um, and new media to uh, distribute pictures or images that depict violence against children. And we're very clear, when it comes to hate speech, propaganda for war, incitement to cause harm and violence, that's already outlawed. But there's never been an intention for us to, 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 to do a surveillance or to insist on, on people coming and, 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 and reporting what you do when you're on the beach. So, so what is the new law supposed to do? The new law is supposed to protect um, uh, uh, citizens. Are supposed to ensure that the same thing that you know you cannot come to my house and insult me so sure. why should you do that online with due respect Sipo um, how do you get to decide what what is an insult and, and what is mm. criticism there's a lot of benchmark studies mm. that we do because what we want to ensure is that our processes are also aligned to international best practice because when it comes to the internet as you know it transcends borders the challenge that uh, someone is faced with in the U.S. is the same as we are faced with mm. here. I, I just need to interject there. Yeah. Karim, I'll come to you in just a moment. Micah. The problem with the bill is that the drafters of it show as little understanding of the internet as Flaudy shows of public broadcasting. <laughs> you said that the internet doesn't respect national boundaries. You said yourself uh, it doesn't respect national I said boundaries. Transcends. So there's a different it, tra okay, it transcends national boundaries. But you want to have a sort of China style no, bureaucratic correct. system of policing the internet. Why do you say a similar so? thing happened in Australia and all that happened was that uh, people moved their websites abroad. They moved servers abroad and the jobs went with them as well. The things that the FBI... No, 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 just uh, clarify for the man why you say that he's moving towards the direction that China yeah. has taken. How do you, how do you compare because, us with China? Because the FPB wants to set up a bureaucratic system of, of what is called prior restraint. We call it censorship in plain English. But what I'm it means is that distributors. That no prior restraint. It's in the it's in the 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 bill. All right, do do. It's, uh, I think what 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 the FPB seeks to do, in essence, which would be to regulate a space that is very dynamic. It's, it's fast moving. He's right in saying that even so-called developed democracies are struggling to formulate copyright laws, formulate digital media policies that accommodate the user experience. And obviously, the, 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 the obvious intent would be to say, OK, let's prevent criminal activities online. Let's prevent content that violates human rights in one way or the other. Great. Yeah. Karima. In fact, I think what was just said segues right into what I'm saying. And I want to refer to a practical experience that we've had at Independent Media. We had a 16-year-old black girl write for us about what it's like to be black in Cape Town. 
and um, her post, uh, her story went online and she was subjected to the most vicious, racist hate speech that you can imagine. And it forced us as a media company to rethink whether we allow online comments or not. We had the obligation to protect this young woman um, from this vitriolic attacks that she was experiencing. But we said that we are not going to allow independent media to be a place where racists can troll youngsters who talk about their experiences in South Africa. So we took a decision to actually close down those comments. Now people know, for example, Media 24's uh, um, uh, online comments were closed, but they didn't engage in a process. They just made an announcement because they wanted to protect their brand because it became associated with racism. All right. And that is something that we have to address. So I we have need to, to balance our <laughs> rights. And that I have is to an interject. Important thing. Okay, so very briefly, then we need to move on. So just on Dudu's point about um, the nuance and all of that, mm. I want to draw in, it's also linked to the SABC censorship and online, right? Mm. There's a documentary that was made that is called Project Spear. And this documentary looks at, in the run-up to the 94 elections, how 30 billion was looted out. Mm. When the producer put it online, SABC also had it removed, okay. you know? And this is also linked to the different forms of censorship, how censoring there becomes censoring online as well. Process in itself is dynamic and shifting, and it cool. must be able to All right. understand okay. that. Okay, Francis, very briefly, please. Just want to say that this question of censorship, which we're discussing now, whether it's SABC or elsewhere, the, the, the proposed legislation, is part and parcel of an ongoing issue around controlling information. And I remind everyone in the audience that the Protection of State Information Bill is still on the president's desk for signing. I see this as part and parcel of a similar process of trying to keep South Africans in the dark. All right, thank you. When we return, we hear from our audience and we search for solutions. <laughs> Welcome back to the big debate on freedom of expression. I'm Masa Chabandlovo. What kind of news coverage is in the public interest? Should the internet be policed? And is police surveillance necessary in our communities? What do you think? Sipo, I heard you saying that uh, you talk to the public. I want to find out which public did you talk to, which communities did you go to? Because I remember last year we had a talk at uh, Pro Bono with the right to know, and you said you'll be going to the Eastern, but even today we never heard anything. And uh, Mbuli, I hear that you, you say that you've been you guys have been working on this thing or you had the struggle uh, from the 90s. But now, Uyatula, you're saying thank you to Tlaudi. Why are you doing that? Are you doing that because of Tlaudi gave 50,000 to the legends or what? Because that's what is happening. So I want some clarity on that. And Sipo, maybe you need to simplify what is a censorship because you're saying we don't understand what is censorship. So you need to go to the community and talk about censorship censorship and tell them what is censorship in this rule, in this cause, in this song, in this event, so that they can understand what is censorship. Because around here we are seeing old people and we are busy talking about these big languages which we don't understand. And you come here, you tell us that we don't understand them. So what is censorship? Tell us. A wise man once said, his name is Hosea, he said, my people perish because they lack knowledge. And he went on to say because they re have rejected knowledge. But then I think at this stage we have been rejected to receive knowledge. Because if we are going to be limited as what to, we see on TV, how are we to know about what's happening in our land? And if we, we see these things project the bad in our land, let it be so that we can learn not to do the bad. It is my understanding that uh, the struggle for water cannot be separated from the struggle for electricity. In the same way that the struggle for electricity cannot be separated from the struggle for education, the struggle for proper sanitation. So <clears throat> I'm actually confused when a uh, people's poet, the man that I grew up admiring, uh, Comrade Muzawa, I want you to know that you actually inspired us back in Gazangul to actually struggle against, against apartheid. 
You know, your poetry inspired us, actually. I still respect you today, but uh, of course you owe me uh, perhaps an apology going forward. <clears throat> Is it not a cruel uh, irony, Comrade Muzwake, that you, who have been bashed, beaten, and humiliated by the apartheid government, whose creative work was, um, subject, was a subject of censorship, <clears throat> to today stand up in a public platform and um, sing praises of a man who is actually censoring the struggle of uh, the people whom you are supposed to be uh, uh, singing your poetry to. <clears throat> are, are, are you telling us that uh, the struggle for you, I mean, for the musicians to actually uh, have a time, it's uh, to be separated from the struggle of the, uh, the, 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 the five-year-old to actually have a proper classroom? Is that what you are saying? I want you to know. I, 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 I mean, I want Clarin to add on that. And then again on the SABC, it's pity that uh, the Honorable Cloud is not here because I was, I really want, would want to ask him and the Honorable Minister to actually tell me whether the SABC has all of a sudden turned into a state broadcaster or whether it's still a, a public broadcaster. Today we are speaking here, we have a constitution and a freedom of expression must be respected. I'm very disappointed to hear uh, people who are standing on behalf of institutions explaining themselves on why should they be, should South Africa be subjected to censorship of any form. Those images that are being censored, that the public broadcaster says, I'm no longer prepared to take them to public, is actually what the freedom of expression is about. We have to be protected on that one. Stop glorifying what Saudi. It doesn't help. Saudi must fall because he's a tough data. Thank you. After the break, a final word from our panel. You're watching The Big Debate. <laughs> Welcome back to The Big Debate. I'm Masa Chabandlovu. Let's hear some final comments from our panel. Koketsu. It is... So sad, yeah, to hear that arts and culture or local content should be prioritized over when it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Mm. It's part and parcel of what's happening in our society. It's informed by what's happening in our society today. And also to limit it to a certain <clears throat> few, whereas the censorship, this whole censorship issue means that other local creators themselves are so deeply affected is just quite a disappointment. All right, Mzwake? I spoke and I came here not wearing a cap of representing an organization, but I'm an activist. So look, our struggles are there. It's true. I'm not being ashamed of the fact that I, I, I spoke about the struggle, freedom. I sacrificed, I was detained. I fought for the liberation of this case. So there's nothing to be ashamed of because I paid the price and my credential speaks volumes. Thank you. Pomo. I must say that uh, the, the South African Police Service, their responsibility is to protect the rights of all the people of South Africa. Those who, have got, who are protesting, they must be uh, protected. But also we have to make sure that they protect property of um, uh, the people who, because you find uh, people are protesting, but then they end up being uh, violent. Or the people who are burning their, 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 their shops, or their houses, they also have the right to be protected. And that's the res responsibility of the South African Police Service. Power. Thank you. Very briefly, please. Karima. For me, the important thing is that Hlaudi is a symptom of what started a long time ago. It started under Snooki Zigalala. We were gagged, banned, and not allowed to do our work as journalists. And for as long as there is this relationship with the shareholder, which is the government, and the Thule House, um, and the SABC is used as a pawn in the factional battles of the ruling party, that problem is not going to be solved. So you can get rid of Flaudi tomorrow, but if you don't deal with the structural issues around how editorial codes needs to be managed and how they need to be free from commercial, political, and narrow sectarian issues, another Flaudi will arise. So I'm saying I want the SABC to be a 
public broadcaster and I want activists and Democrats to get involved in making sure that the SABC remains a tool for ordinary people, for poor people, for the most marginalized. Thank you. <laughs> Ruben. Probably let me clarify first that uh, we do prescribe local content quotas. In actual fact, early this year we published regulations after a two, three year period of consultation and all of that research and stuff like that. And of course, there are minimum prescribed quotas for SABC, commercial broadcasters, and also community broadcasters. So broadcasters are welcomed if they exceed those uh, minimum prescribed quotas, and uh, that's, that's encouraged. The second issue is, um, our role is to ensure that this democratic space, we open the airwaves, and if you look at the airwaves uh, since 1994 to date, it has diversified, and that diversity is critical for the construction of a democratic project. Thank you. Thanks. Francis, your brief closing statement, please. The SABC should be bringing us, the people of South Africa, the news. It shouldn't be the news. And for the last while, it's been the news. It must now get its act together and serve the people. It's a public broadcaster. It's not a state broadcaster. And if that's not its mandate, let's close it down and start again. Thank you. See, Paul? OK, as the Film and Publication Board, um, our role is to impose um, restrictions on, on the distribution of content to ensure that children are protected from um, disturbing and harmful content. We also ensure that children have a safe and empowering experience uh, where, they are, where they engage in online activities. But uh, most of the time, uh, and people who, when we take these decisions and they don't agree with the decisions, they're very quick to label us as censors. So not every restriction on, 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 on the type of content that gets to be distributed is um, amounts to censorship. In fact, as a country, we have our own norms and values, uh, and we have codified these uh, standards in our classification guidelines. So we will be coming to Ekuruleni, and I'm calling upon all South Africans to ensure that in October, when you open our process of consultations on the classification guidelines, you give us your inputs, because if not, uh, we're going to create these uh, uh, norms, we're going to create these standards, and then you're going to cry foul and say we are censoring info. And I think I'm also inviting right to know it's high time that you, you come on board as, as, as a key partner and, and, and give us, if, 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 if you have a better way in which we can resolve some of these issues that we have, come on board. We, we are welcome. Mika, your brief closing statement, please. There is a common line of thought running through all this bad policy and bad le legislation and bad decision making. And that is that if these people in power, people who are making these decisions and crafting this policy, think that we, the public, are idiots. The idea that, you know, that we are a danger to ourselves and that the internet is full of pedophiles uh, and that the internet is first and foremost a threat or that we shouldn't be uh, showing crime on TV because we'll go out and commit crime. It's, it's damaging to democracy. It infantilizes us. We're not idiots, right? We're, we're, we have a proud tradition of defying censorship, and we don't want to go down that road again. Thank you. Freedom of expression is guaranteed in our Constitution. But should there be a limit to our free expression when it comes to things like violent protests? Or are those limits being used to protect those at the top from criticism? And how do we get the balance right? You decide. From me, Masa Chabandlovu, thank you for watching The Big Debate. <laughs>